Hi, welcome everyone. In this video, I am going to show you how to run Fourier transformation based ARDL model, which is mostly written as FARDL or Fourier ARDL models in the published papers. So, before uh, going through the codes, I will show you some background on, on my Word file. So, let's talk about it. So, uh, I will give you a brief background and then you can read it here by pausing the video. I will zoom it up. So conventionally, people have used the trend variable to to uh, capture the trend component or do to to do the detrended. But this is a linear method because the trend variable grows linearly. But if the trend is non-linear, some people have tried to use quadratic or cubic form of trend variable. But if it is cyclic, then then you need to make sure that the trend variable resets every year or every cycle after every cycle. But the problem is that. Um, uh, what is is the size of the cycle? It is unknown. Sometimes cycle is a quarterly, yearly, two year, five years, or ten years. We don't know. So what we can do is that the Fourier transformation uses the cause and sign function to capture the periodic patterns or seasonality in the data based upon harmonic frequency levels. So you can increase the frequencies by adding more harmonic harmonic components from one to three and so on. So one is the lowest frequency, lowest or the longest cycle. And second is the smaller cycle. Third is more small and the bigger the number, the smaller the cycle it will become. Uh, so this way it will capture the cyclic trends in the data. Uh, in this context, time series analysis, uh, time, in the context of time series analysis, Fourier terms like uh, cos one, sine one, cos two, sine two, cos three, sine three are generated when we use the uh, when when we use three harmonies harmonics when we use three harmonics if if we have two harmonics then there will be no sine three or cos three so what does cosine term represent it represents the cosine function in the Fourier analysis it captures the frequency component in the of the periodic pattern of data and one means low frequency and so on it 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 Cosine functions are symmetric around y-axis and oscillate between 0 and 1. So it's a cycle. Similarly, sine term, uh, it also covers the frequency of the data. And it, it is it is a phase shift by 90 degrees. So it, it, it covers the other side of the frequency. And it oscillates between minus 1 and 1. So what is an advantage? It captures seasonality. It is flexible in modeling. You can add that in any model like OLS, ARDL, any, and it will just to nonlinear trends. So if the trends are nonlinear, it can capture because the the sine function is a nonlinear term. So it's uh, it has many advantages over simple regression. Like uh, it it can it can add it it will remove the seasonality to make sure that your independent variables are representing a straight line, and and it helps in and to to capture periodicity or patterns within the data set uh, this capability makes particularly powerful application in signal processing especially in the field of signal processing time series data seasonal trend decomposition studies like these two uh, i will show you the references for your series can efficiently represent signals with fewer uh, fewer co uh, coefficient compared to polynomial for example uh, if your cycle if the data has um, three cycles so you have to add a power one power two power three cubic transformation between three variables but here you can only add a uh, sign three uh, sign uh, harmonic three which will capture all of it so one variable rather than three variables so last Fourier transformation can handle nonlinear relationship oscillatory behavior, uh, which OLS does not capture, which assumes that the relationships are linear. See, okay, and then it can uh, other advantages like it can make complex models, and it it is it it, it can capture periodicity. So there are few studies that I found. I only cited one that have used in the ARDL model, and they stated that it can capture the structural breaks and fractional frequencies. And one example that I've written here that if if your data set shows really yearly sales, and you suspect that there is a seasonal pattern, higher sales during certain months, 
Fourier transformation, sign of design, communicant health modeling, the predicting these seasonal fluctuations more accurately. Each uh, cosine and sine term represent uh, different frequencies and uh, frequency of seasonality to capture both low and high frequency variations. So it means if you use all of them, few of them will be insignificant because their seasonality is not there and you, then you can drop it if you want. So this is the article that I showed you later on. So they have used um, bootstrap ARDL model but added the Fourier function in it, which other, other people call it FARDL. Okay, now we'll go towards the R and I will try to show you the codes and, and go through it slowly so that you can copy and type the codes. These are few libraries that are required to be loaded. So I will press control and enter. I will load the data set and I will show you what the data set has. One, I have one data set that is about um, agriculture value added, industry value added, uh, and uh, services value added, GDP and rail infrastructure, road infrastructure, and sea infrastructure and air infrastructure indices. So this is data times data from 1982 to 2016. Okay. So then you have to declare that this is a time series data. So this is a command that is used. Then I generated a scale variable just to show you how to make it. And then cross products. Then you can have a descriptive stat of your data. Stat describe it will show you all the characteristics of the data, number of values, number of null, number of NA, number of minimum, maximum, range, sum, median, mean, and several others. I will go forward. Then you can create a histogram of the variables. It's shown here. You can make it bigger by moving the windows. Okay, then you can check for normality between the variables. So this data is normal. Okay, and then you can plot a time series chart like this. GDP is growing over the time. Then you can compare two variables like this. Okay, so the only requirement is that the axis, the range of the data must be similar, minimum and maximum value, otherwise they will not overlap. Otherwise, you have to add a secondary y-axis. Then we will start towards uh, generating Fourier series. First of all, I will count how many data observations are there. Okay, and then count how many harmonics I need to add. In this paper, uh, the formula has been shown. You can download this. I will show you this paper. In this paper, you can see the formula of how the harmonics has been created. So the formula is that 2 pi kt over t. So all of these are not uh, dependent on the number of variables that you have used. And, and so here, uh, the k is the number of harmonics. And, and if you want to add 1, 2, 3, so it will add on to the model. So so this is the way they make it. So if you see, this is the ARDL equation and they have in the next term, they have added the harmonics in the long term portion. So it's shown here. So you can uh, technically, there is no need to require to add them in the short run, but even if you add it, it will become insignificant. So this way you can add the Fourier component. So this is the formula shown here. Now I need to create a formula generate Fourier term, it will start from 1 to n, number of observation, it will uh, then use this formula uh, 2 pi i into t divided by n, and then this function is closed. And then when I say what is my n and k, my n is uh, number of observation and k is 3. So when I do it, uh, it will create a data set. And when I do df Fourier, so you see there will be a data set and then there are this cosine sine variables are shown here. So these are the uh, Fourier functions. You can plot them uh, just to see. So you can see the sine function, it's one wave uh, and it's uh, between the whole time period. But if you have a look at the other one, there are two waves in whole time period. There are three waves in whole time period. Then if you use cosine, it is inverse of sine, and uh, you can see this one wave. And then if you see cosine 2, it has two waves. It 
as three waves. So this way you can see how they are. So it depends upon the waves. Wavelets depend upon the number of observations and time period. The the trend, uh, the number of observations and what we call it uh, k. How many k you need to check. So this way it will calculate. So I will start with uh, have a look at the correlations. So this is the correlation table. You can see the GDP is highly correlated with this um, sign one. So there is a correlation with negatively correlation, and then it has not a strong correlation with the cosine functions. Okay, so if I had the GDP dependent, then at least sign one should be there. So then I will run a simple OLS with these variables. If you have a look at these variables, so you can see all three cosines are significant and two of the sign functions are significant and all other variables are also significant. This is simple OLS. If you look at Durban Watson, it, it's uh, 1.77 and uh, Durban Watson. So it, there is autocorrelation because it's a time series data. And then this is serial autocorrelation up to lag one. So it says that there is no say one order, one lag autocorrelation. Now, but if you see the residuals and if I do the residual plot, residual scatter plot, if you look that there is positive association between the residuals and the lag of residuals. So there is autocorrelation. So you can also look at using this method. This checks for nonlinear autocorrelation. So there is correlation residual and lag of residuals. So the net net correlation is very small, but the correlation value has changed over time. So this is the way we check for um, simple regression. So now I will look show you the uh, ARDL model. So I will make sure that you can read it. So we start with ARDL, uh, dependent variable, independent variables. I have used two cross products and the six, uh, six Fourier series, data file and the lag order. I try to make sure that the Fourier series has zero lag, otherwise they, they usually become collinear. So when I run this ARDL model, you can see the results of unrestricted ARDL. Now I need to find the lag order. So for the lag order, I added 1, 1, 1, otherwise it will not check. And the result shows that I should add one lag, uh, one lag for each uh, Fourier series. But the problem is if you add them, it will not give you, uh, it, will, it will be dropped automatically because of collinearity. Now what I will do, I will run the ARDL model based on the lags that are proposed. So I added zero lags for all of them because the independent variables were zero lag and the Fourier series are assumed to be zero lag. So when I run this model, it is similar to the above one, but here there's only one lag. In the above example, there were two, two lags for independent variables. Now, if I check for the F bound test, it is significant means there is a longer in relation. Now, you can you can have a look to see the short run it can be shown here so this is again same results then if you want to see the short run it will come using this well, see a recollection component is negative significant and there are no short run variables because there are no lags used for independent variables so um short run variable short run variables are equal to the number of lags used minus one so they are already zero so they are not here so then you can look for uh, long run you can and use in this so in the long run uh, agriculture is insignificant but the cross products are significant and these two functions are significant only affecting the the dependent variable then you can drop them if you want if, assuming that they are insignificant and it might improve the bound test value also and similarly this is another way to see the long run then you can also use the bootstrap method this is the command but you cannot add the Fourier components here uh, this command uh, does not work on too many variables but but you can try uh, if the newer version can work on it, you can just add the six variables of the Fourier series and somebody in the boot. So the bootstrap takes time. And in my other video, I have already showed it how to use it. 
now i will go towards the diagnostics of this fardl model so this is the articulation there is no articulation this is another method of articulation it's not present this is another version it is saying that at at 1% there is articulation uh, 10% there is articulation this is saying that model there is no non linearity no non linearity no non linearity otherwise i would have added spare variables of any of the variables this is normality residuals are normal then i can check for the qism so when i plot the qism function it is saying that there is a break here so you can add a structural break variable or just remove the insignificant variables it might improve it so this is a way you can run the 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 ideal model using four year series i will go it down slowly so that you can uh, learn how the code is written this portion and then this portion so bic criteria was used to check for the lag order Yes, the commands are small enough to be shown on one screen. So I hope you understood uh, this Fourier series ideal model. You can use it in your analysis, and it and, and you can improve your results by removing the noise that is in the data because of seasonality. Thank you very much.